we're going to start working on the notebook for reading files. So far in the course, we have whatever data we needed, we just put the data in the code. Even in your assignment, when you needed some five addresses, we just defined them in a list. In real world, that's not true. If you say, I want to geocode a thousand addresses, most likely somebody will give you an Excel file or they say, here's a table in the database, go and use that. So we'll now learn how to read files or databases in Python and get data from there. So let's start working on this. First thing when we want to read files is we need to tell Python where the files are. So the files may be in a file system or in a database. So first we need to tell Python where to find those files. For working with files on your computer, we have this module called OS that Python gives you that is a lot of helper functions to allow you to work with file paths and files on your computer. Let's say I have a file in your data package. If I open the data package, we have this file called worldcities.csv. This is a file containing a database of all the major cities of the world. It's got over 15,000 lines, and it has got information about the city, its population, its coordinates, etc. We'll be using this file to answer questions such as, what is the distance from my home city to every other city in my country? Because this is called a database of all the cities, we can extract the relevant coordinates and city names and do some analysis. But first, we need to go and tell Python where the file is. So the file is in my data folder inside of the Python Foundation folder. I can tell Python that you can go and find the file in this folder, data slash worldcities.csv. Right? So this is a relative path to the file. So compared to where my file is, so my code is in this directory, 09 file is here. And relative to this file, my data is in data slash worldcities.csv. So this is called a relative path. So wherever your code is compared to that, how do you find the file? And this is preferred in Python or in general program because then your code is portable. You have a file, you have a data alongside it, you can zip it or you can compress it, send it to somebody, they can uncompress it or you put it on a server. Python knows how to find it because the path is relative. You have a folder, inside that you have data. If you define an absolute path, you can also do things like this. I can say my absolute path to this is users, my home folder name, slash download, slash Python foundation, slash data, slash versity. So this is an absolute path. I can define a path like this and say, this is where to find my files. This is also totally fine. If you're on Windows, it'll be like C, colon, slash, user, whatever. If you define a path like this, that means only you can run this code. So if somebody else wants to run this, they have to change the path to their own computer. If you had this notebook and you try to run it on a different computer, you may need to change the path. So I generally don't prefer absolute paths, prefer relative paths wherever possible. But if you must use an absolute path, you can use that as well. So here we'll just define the path as a relative path. We want to say data slash worldcities.csv. Let's run this code. Here we are using the OS module to construct the path. We say, give me a path from the data folder with the file called worldcities.csv. So we give this two arguments and we get this path here. If you try to run the same cell, if you're on a Windows machine, try running the cell on a machine. If you import OS and if you run this, you'll see that you might see something different. You might see data backslash worldcities.csv. On Mac and Linux, it'll be a forward slash because the separator of the path, it depends on the system that you're running. This is another problem. If I define my path to be like this, say my path is data slash worldcities.csv. And I'm running this on a, window, a Mac computer, but now I take the same notebook, same relative path on a Windows computer, I'll get an error because I use a different separator. On Windows, the separator goes like this. So that's why uh, whenever you're constructing paths, always use the os.path module, which knows how to construct the path correctly, depending on your platform that you run. So now, if I have a path, I can say my path is the data slash worldcities.csv. So now I told Python where to find the file. Let's open it. To open the file in Python, we can just use the open function. So we can say open and we need to give the path to a file. It'll just open the file. So we'll just say my file is in this path. So I'll say open data slash worldcities.csv. And we can store it in some variable. Right? So I ran this and Python just opened the file. 
what happens is Python will go and look for this path, see if we can read the file. If we can read the file, it'll give you a pointer saying that I know where the file is, I can open it. Now tell me what to do with it. So right now it's just waiting for me to say, I opened the file, what to do with it. I can do something with the file. And finally, once I'm done with it, I need to close it. This is how you open a file and do something with it and then close it. Let's see what we can do with it. We can say, uh, I want to go over the lines of the file. Let's see how, you know, what is the content of the file. To iterate over the file, we can just say for line in F, print line. This F object allows us to iterate through the line, through the file line by line. Let's run this. And you can see it prints the different lines, the file. It's a very long file, so you can see the print a lot of things here. So we just opened the file and we went through and iterated through the lines of it. Let's, you know, typically when you're working with Python, you are just reading file line by line. You can also say f dot read line. The read line function is a function that just reads one line from file. So you can see I've done f dot read line. I printed the first line. If I call f dot read line again, it's going to print the second line. So I can just keep calling f dot read line and just read file one after the other. Typically, you don't want to do this. You just want to kind of iterate through all the lines in the file. But sometimes just reading one line is helpful, especially in case of like CSV file, you say f dot read line, that's my header line. And then you start iterating with the file. So a couple of ways to do this. Typically, I only use this later. So I can just say for x in f, do something with x, right? And again, this is same as, you know, printing each file line by line. The open function here has a couple of arguments. When you open it, by default, it opens the file in a read mode. So the second argument to the open function is, do you want to read the file or write to the file? So here we just say, I want to read it. I don't want to change the file at all. So we can give file. Sometimes some of you, if you just try to do this, depending on a system in the Python version, you might get an error because this particular file contains some non-Latin characters. You can see this, this Sao Paulo. This one has a non-Latin character. Some systems will fail saying that I don't understand what is the content of this file because it's not Latin English characters. So you need to specify how, what encoding your file comes in. So there's an encoding parameter. The most commonly used encoding for all international characters is something called UTF-8. So the encoding really depends on the person who created this file. So if you download some file, you don't know what the encoding, go and check the metadata, check the documentation. If you do not know, UTF-8 is a good guess. I think nowadays everybody uses UTF-8. So if you get an encoding error, you can use UTF-8. And now you can open the file and do something. Let's try to see how we can write a file. So here we have a folder called output. I want to create some file inside of that. Let's see, it's a similar syntax, but we will kind of see the difference. So here we did this, so we'd say for x in f, print x. Right? So this is how you iterate and read over the file. Let's write some files. So I'll say my output file name is test.txt. I just want to create a plain text file. So I want to construct the path first. So I will say my path is os.path.join. I want to put it in the output folder, right? So I'll say my folder is output and the file should be output file. Let's print and check if my file looks path look correct. Okay, so I have my path. This is where I want to put my output file. So to write to a file, same thing. You can say open my output file. So you go and open this. Now, if you try to open this, Python will say, sorry, this file doesn't exist. I can't open it. We say, okay, we want to create it. It doesn't exist. We want to create it. So you need to give the second parameter, which is the mode. So we say, we don't want to read it. We want to write to it. And then Python allowed to say, okay, I'm going to create a file in memory and I'm going to write it to this particular place. 
Once we have a file object in the write mode, we can just say write hello. We just write some content. And finally, we say out f dot close. Done. And what happened? Let's just go and check the output. You can see I have this file test.txt. It was created. If I open this, it just says hello. Okay. So this is, I use Python to create a file at the chosen place. The syntax is very similar. You open the file in write mode to write the content, then use f dot write to write some content and close it. For reading, just open the file and then you can either iterate to the file line by line or just say f dot read line to just print the first line, f dot read line to print the second line, and so on. And there are a few other functions, but again, this is the most commonly used ones. So one of the things that you may want to do is I want to count the number of lines in a file. So I have a somebody sent me a file, I want to read it, I want to know how big is the file. So you can do something like this. You open the file and you say, set the count variable to be zero. So start count to zero and say for line in F, you are iterating through the line. For each line that you read, you increase the counter by one. So it's a count plus equal to one. So this is a syntax in Python that says count equals count plus one. So whatever the count value was, increase it by one. A shorthand for this is count plus one. So when I run this, it brings 15,494. That means the loop was ran 15,494 times and you get the count. So this is again one way to get the count of the lines in the file. We're not going to spend too much time on reading files by line or reading using the standard libraries. We're going to spend more time doing this with pandas and geopandas, but sometimes still so it might be helpful for you to read a file line by line and do some processing. So this is the way to do this in Python. Let's do a quick exercise. 